All right, so now that we've laid out the basic structure of our application, what I want to be able to do right now is I want to actually start working on the authentication portion of the app. So in the end, what I want to be able to do is I want to fire off a curl request with the method of post to localhost 3000 slash register. So of course that endpoint doesn't exist yet. So let's go ahead and create it. So I'll switch to VS code. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to extract this piece of code to a separate file. So in fact, what I'll do is I'll switch to API folder and I'm going to create a new file inside of the source directory. I'm going to call this one app.ts. What I want to do is I want to move any routes and any middleware to that file. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be instantiating express and we're going to need to import express from express and we're going to be attaching the session also on that app instance. So the only issue here right now is we need to pass in the store. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable. We're going to call this one store and this will be the Redis store. What we're going to do here is we're going to take in the store as a variable. So I'm going to make this a function. So let's call this one const create app. We're going to take in a store and we're going to create a new application and we're simply going to return that application afterwards. So the session is going to come from express session, of course, and now the session options, we can import them from config and let's do an export of that const. Now this store is going to be passed to this session. In fact, there should be a store being exported from this file. So let's see express session store and we're going to mark it as a store that's compatible with express session. OK, and with that, we're going to get back to this file. So now we don't need to import session options. What we're going to import instead is we're going to import from app we will be importing create app. So this way we'll create an instance of app like this passing in the store and then we're going to call app.listen on it. So the difference right now is that this makes the app a bit more modular. This way we can actually unit test this piece of code much easier. And any side effects of connecting to a Mongo database or connecting to a Redis store, well those are all extracted to a separate file now. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to get rid of this example path. What we're going to do instead is we're going to have a slash register route. Now, the only issue here is that we're going to have a lot more routes in this file and it's going to become difficult to manage because we'll have a lot of logic in this file. So what I suggest we do is I would suggest we create another folder. Let's call this one routes. And now inside of routes, we're going to touch a couple of files. So we'll touch an index.ts file and also register.ts. Okay, so switching to register.ts inside of this file, we're going to import from Express a router. So we're going to create a new router in here and the route will be a post route on slash register. Again, we're building a REST API, so it doesn't really make sense to have a get method on register. So a get method would typically be on the front end application. We're only going to take post because in this case, we're building a REST API once again. Okay, so we're going to take in a closure with a request and a response, and then we're going to do an export default of router. So if I now go to routes slash index in here, we're going to export default as register from register like this. Okay. So instead of app, we can now go ahead and import that route. So from routes and let me check if I've put it in the right place, I'm going to need to go up and do move routes to source like this. So we're going to be importing register like this. So what we can now do is we can call app.use with the register route. And just for the example, let's go to register and let's simply do rest.json message okay and if I do a post once again let me actually clear this let's do curl method of post to localhost 3000 slash register that's going to give us a message of okay all right so what I want to be able to do is I want to pass some information to that endpoint so in fact I want to be able to pass a JSON with my email so let's say alex at gmail.com and I'm going to need to set a header of content type set to application slash json and i get this a response but if you go back you're going to notice that if we try to console log request.body you're going to see that we're not really getting anything just yet so let's try that again we get undefined and now to make that work we're going to need to go back to app.ts and what i'm going to do is i'm going to call app.use express.json so this is something you would do in the past with body parser, but right now the JSON parsing capabilities are built into Express. So we can simply call express.json instead. So if I fire off the request again, hopefully we're going to see the email and we do. And the next step for us would be to validate that information. So what I'll do for validation is I'm going to install a library called joy. So we're going to install happy slash joy and we're going to use that for validation. And once again, because I'm using TypeScript, I'm going to install types slash happy underscore underscore joy like this. 
All right, so if we switch back to our register file, so what we can do in here is we can define a schema for validation. But once again, validation is something that doesn't really belong to the router. In this case, we just have the business logic to register the user and send back a successful response. So for validation, I'm going to create a separate directory. This time I'll switch to source to make sure it's inside the right folder. So let's make a new folder. Let's call it validation. I'm going to touch a few files. So inside of validation, let's actually switch there as well. So I'm going to touch two files both with the .ts extension. One will be index and one will be auth. What we're going to do is we're going to switch to validation. We're going to export everything from auth. And then inside of the auth file itself, what we're going to have is we're going to import from Joy. And let's actually go to the documentation for Joy. So I'm going to look for that package. And if we visit the website, we're going to find a nice example that we can already use. All right, so what we need to do is we need to, of course, import Joy, which we've already done, except I need to be careful. This is happy slash Joy like this. We're going to need to create a schema. So I'm going to call this register schema. This will be joy.object and we'll pass in the email address. This will be joy.string. We're going to pass in a password, joy.string as well. We're going to have also a password confirmation. This is typically a good practice to follow in the sense that you require the user to re-enter the password because when they type in something to the input, they're typically not able to see what they're typing because you would most often have the type of password on that field. So to be able to make sure that they type the right thing, you want to ask them for a confirmation. So we're going to ask for a password confirmation. And besides that, we're going to also ask for a name. So this will be a joy string. For the email, we're going to use the email method. And I'm going to make this a minimum of eight and a maximum of 254. We're going to lowercase this because typically when it comes to the email address, so let's say alex at gmail.com, the domain name is definitely going to be case insensitive, but the email address itself is usually case sensitive. But you will find that most email providers will consider alex and alex uppercase as the same thing. So to avoid issues in our database, we're going to force all of the emails to be casted to lowercase. We're going to also trim this and make it required. Now for the name, we'll make it a minimum of three a maximum of of let's say 128, we're gonna trim it and we're gonna make it required as well. Now for the password, let's say the minimum is eight, we'll make the maximum of 128 and make this required also. Finally, for the confirmation, this one needs to be a valid value and the only valid value that we allow here is a reference to the password field. And of course we make this required. So this is only going to work if you give the password confirmation the exact same value as password. So we're referencing password and telling Joy that the only valid value in this case is in fact that password value. Now we're going to come back to the password field. There's a few more things that we need to do here, especially as it pertains to the maximum allowed length. We're going to come back to it in a bit. So for the time being, let's actually just do an export of register schema. And let's make sure that we're able to import that schema. So let's do import from validation. In fact, in this case, we're going to need to go one level up like this, and we're going to import register schema. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to await register schema dot validate async. We're going to pass in request.body and we're going to tell it not to abort early. So we're going to set abort early false like this. And we're going to need to make this an async function. So once the validation passes, what we're going to do is we're going to take a few things from rec.body. So we're going to take in the email address. We're going to take the name and the password as well. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the user with the given email address doesn't exist yet. So to be able to do that, we're going to need to leverage Mongoose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back to the terminal. Let's make sure that we are in the source directory of API folder. Let's make a new directory. We're going to call this one models. And inside of models, we're going to touch a user dot ts file okay so this is going to be this file over here and the other thing i'm going to do is i'm also going to touch models index.ts okay so inside of this file what we're going to do is we're going to import mongoose from mongoose we're going to create a constant of user schema this will be a new schema and once again we're going to have an email address of string we're going to have a name of string we'll have a password and we're going to also pass in timestamps so i'll say timestamps set to true and what we're going to do in this file is we're going to export const user so this will be a model. Let's import model from Mongoose. So we'll give it a name of user and we'll pass in the user schema. In fact, looks like Mongoose is not needed here. So let's remove that. And then inside of the index file, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to models index and I'm just going to export everything from user. 
In fact, to be consistent, I'll switch to lowercase. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but let's switch to models. The user will become user.ts. So this will be our user. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to define an interface of user document. This one is going to extend document. In fact, this document will come from Mongoose like this. And I'll define an email. This will be a string. Same thing for name, same thing for password. Okay, and I'll pass in the user document in here on the model. And again, this is only for TypeScript. If you're just using JavaScript, you don't really need to do this step. Okay, so once we are here, what we can do is we can do an import of user, first of all, that's done for us with an autocomplete. But I'm going to do user.exists with an email and we'll assign this to a variable of found. I have to call a wait on it. And if the email in fact was found, what we can do is we can throw new error invalid email. Now, as it pertains to validation error messages, you want to be careful in the sense that you don't want to expose too much information. So for example, one thing you could of course do is you can just say that email is already taken, but this is going to reveal a bit of information about your database. If you want to be generic and not expose too much information, you may want to just simply return back invalid email. Okay, and then if the user wasn't found, in fact, so we're going to do is we're going to call user.create and I'm going to pass in the email, the name, and the password. We could return back the user object itself, or we could just simply return a message of OK. So let's simply do this for the time being. And I'm going to do a curl of post on localhost. 3000. In fact, let me actually type this out because we're going to be typing these commands a lot. Let me actually create a readme file. I'm going to call this node auth and I'll have a section for curl. So inside of this, I'm simply going to paste in all of the curl commands just so we don't type them over and over again. Okay, so this will be a curl with a method of post on the slash register. We'll have a header of content type of application slash JSON. The data in this case will be an object, a JSON object with email, let's say set to alex at gmail.com. So let me go ahead and put this on a separate line. So let's say that's going to be our email. We're going to pass in a name, say um, Alex, and then the password will be just going to put secret and I'll put in a password password confirmation of secret as well. Okay, and let's just make sure that this is eight characters long. We'll just add a couple of digits. All right, so I'll try to copy this and I'll switch to my terminal. If we run this, we get a message of okay. So what we can do right now is I'm going to run Docker exec in interactive mode on the node auth database container. We're going to run Mongo. We're going to pass in username of admin, password of secret, and the database will be auth. Okay, so let's check the database, database.users.find. Now let's actually do pretty on it. Okay, so we did save the user, but we saved the password in clear text, which is bad. And we also didn't actually log in the user. So before we address the password issue, let's go back in here. And what I'd like to do ideally is I'd like to simply call login, passing in the request and the user ID. So this would be an ideal API I'd like to use. So let's actually assign this back to a user and I'm going to create another module. So I'll switch back to API and source and I'm going to touch a file. We're going to call this one auth.ts. So now inside of this file, we're going to export const of login. So this function will simply take in the request. This will be the request coming in from Express. And the second argument will be user ID of a string. That's kind of why using TypeScript in this case is useful because we get very nice type hints and type annotations for free. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set request.session.userID to the user ID. And this will save the user ID on this session object of the request. Again, if this syntax is kind of unfamiliar to you, once again, I invite you to go back to my session authentication express video, which talks about this object and the session options in a lot more detail. But the one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch double quotes to single quotes and let's get rid of that semicolon. Okay, so I do get a warning here because in theory, the session could possibly be undefined. Now that's only possible if we forgot to call app.use with the session. So in this case, the session will in fact be undefined. What I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to simply use the not null assertion operator and this will simply ignore the use case when the session is undefined. Okay, so with that, we can actually import the login method or function in this case, and we're going to do exactly that. So we're going to set in user ID on the session, and this should hopefully set a cookie for us. So to double check that, in fact, let me go back in here and I'm going to delete everything from users and I'm going to rerun that same curl command, except this time I'm going to add a dash V flag in the beginning like this. Okay, as you can see, we get a set cookie header. So this means that the cookie is being set. And in fact, to be 100% sure, let's do a find once again. So the user is in fact being created. And what I'm also going to do is in a separate tab, I'm going to run docker exec again in an interactive mode on node auth 
in this case cache we're going to connect with redis cli with a password of secret like this so if i do scan zero you're going to see that session being created in redis so if i do get on that session you're going to see the value so here's the user id ends with 4f2 and this is the user id 4f2 so it's matching up and also the time to live right now is a little bit less than half an hour so what we could do now is if i use that same cookie i could do curl with a post on localhost 3000 slash register and what i can do is i can put that cookie value inside so if we copy sid equals that token so we're going to put it in and this will send a request to register except well there's one thing the server seems to be hang up so we don't get any reply but this is because we get an unhandled promise rejection but there's also a second issue and it's the fact that we're actually able to get into register if i do let's say a console log here and we're going to run it again so you can see we do get a hit but that's not really ideal because in this case what we actually want to do is we want to only allow this route to be accessible to those people who are guests so what i'm going to do is i'll switch back to the terminal and inside of the source directory let's make a new directory we're going to call this one middleware and then inside of middleware what we're going to do is we're going to touch two files both of them with a ts extension one is going to be auth the other one is going to be index so this created the two files for us so now what i want to do is i want to go first of all to that index file inside of let's say middleware we're going to export everything from auth and then inside of middleware auth what we're going to do is we're going to create a constant which we're going to export so this will be a constant of let's call this one guest you could also say something like ensure logged out for example but i'm simply going to call it guest okay so this will be a function that takes in request response and next so all of those are going to come from express but this one will be request this one will be response and this one will be next function right so what this will do is this will check if the user is logged in so if we are logged in based on the request we're going to throw a new exception or a new error you are already logged in otherwise we're going to call next what we could also do is we can call next with the error like this and we have to be careful to also return this so that we don't exit the if and continue with the next on this line but i'm actually going to call this one is logged in just for clarity and this one's going to come from auth actually so we're going to go one level up and import this from auth so we already have a function that's called login we're going to create another one and this one will be export const is logged in depending on the request which we already have we're gonna determine if the request session already contains the user id and we'll just double negate it so this way if we get undefined then this gets converted to false if we get a string of the object id this one gets converted to true and once again i have to use the not null assertion operator so let's close that and now what we can do is we can simply put in guest in here and we can auto import it from middleware All right so if we go ahead and register once again so i'm gonna just delete that session okay and if we go back in here let's copy this and let's go ahead and run it so this will give us back a cookie so what i'll do this time is i'm gonna use the same command except I delete a bunch of stuff and instead of passing in the payload i'll pass in the cookie so the cookie i'm gonna pass in is sid with that token so hopefully if i pass that in we get an error which says you are already locked in and once again this kind of brings us back to error handling because we're building a rest api but we're getting back an html payload which is not good and the second thing is if i try to as you saw before, if I try to register the second time with the same payload, it's going to hang up the server. So we're not getting back a response because we're getting an exception. So we're going to handle air handling in the next video and I'll see you then.